On the morning of July 17th, 2023, in the district of Tiza, Cebu City, a box lay abandoned by a roadside. Earlier, a nearby security guard had spotted the box, but dismissed it, presuming it had just fallen from a delivery van. By early afternoon, a street cleaner stumbled upon the same box. He tried to pick it up, but its unexpected weight prompted him to seek aid from a local village watchman. Their joint efforts to move the box unveiled a chilling sight. A human arm protruding from within. The local authorities were swiftly alerted and by 2 p.m. police officers unveiled the remains of a young woman bearing the harrowing evidence of a violent and cruel end. The fate that befell this woman is truly disturbing. Taking her life in such a brutal manner is tragic enough, but the callous disposal of her body further magnifies the wickedness of the act. One can only imagine the fear and pain that she suffered in her final moments. Before we dive in, I want to say that I make videos weekly, so if you want to see my next one, please drop the video a like and subscribe if you are new. It really helps me out. Thank you. With no immediate means of identification, the body was temporarily placed in a funeral home. On July 18th, 2023, the deceased was identified as 19-year-old Rhea May Tokmo from Panebo City in the Davao del Norte. A friend of Rhea confirmed her identity, noting the black shorts she frequently wore, her dental braces, necklace and distinctive tattoo. Upon confirming her identity, Authorities swiftly began a background investigation into her activities and the last individuals she had contact with. On July 19th, Rhea's older sister arrived in Cebu, accompanied by their father. Once again, the victim was confirmed to be Rhea. They revealed that she was the youngest amongst three sisters. Since the separation of their parents, Rhea had been residing with her elder sister. They described Rhea as an exceptionally kind-hearted individual, a dependable sister, and a cherished family member. She had ambitions of finishing college to uplift her family's situation, leading her to enroll in a criminology program in Panebo City. When not attending classes, Rhea devoted her time to looking after her five-year-old nephew. Eventually, she made the tough call to halt her studies and told her sister that she intends to find employment in DeVeo City, while her sister insisted that she should continue her education, even promising to pay her expenses. Rhea was firm in her choice to earn and set aside money before pursuing further studies. While her sister expressed concerns amidst the mounting pressure, she eventually agreed and permitted Rhea to pursue work. However, unbeknownst to the family, Rhea did not move to Deveo. Instead, she diverted her path to Cebu on July 14th, 2023. She had secured a job through her friend, Jewel Smith, in Mandeo, Cebu City. Rhea took up a position in a bar and restaurant, initially residing in the staff quarters. However, after a short stint, she relocated to a rented house in Barangay Luk, Mandao City, where she was joined by her friend, Jewel Smith. The family was taken aback Upon learning that Rhea was in Cebu, they found out because Rhea had once phoned her elder sister, asking for help to book a ticket back to Deveo for a family gathering. Despite their shock and worry, Rhea assured them that she was doing well in Cebu and that there was no cause for concern. 
However, their relief turned to despair upon hearing the news of her tragic death. They further discovered that Rhea's personal belongings, including her wallet and phone, which she always kept with her, were missing. The investigators began their inquiry at the boarding house in Barangay Luk, Mandau City, where Rhea had been residing. A local shopkeeper and her roommate, Smith, provided crucial information. They said that Rhea was last spotted alive around 4pm on July 16th, 2023, based on the footage from a nearby CCTV camera. In the CCTV footage, Rhea was observed with a man dressed in an orange t-shirt, riding a motorcycle. They seemed to head in the direction of Sitayo Mohan, which ominously is where Rhea's body was later discovered. The investigators immediately handed over this CCTV footage to the Regional Anti-Cybercrime Unit. The intention was to enhance the video quality to get a clearer view of the man on the motorcycle and hopefully learn the vehicle's license plate. Fast forward to July 27th, roughly 10 days after the grim discovery of Rhea's remains. A significant development took place. A witness voluntarily appeared at the Lamangon police office, holding a mobile phone, which he claimed belonged to Rhea May. He told how he purchased the device from an individual near the Carbon Public Market. Upon accessing the phone, he stumbled upon photos of Rhea, which prompted him to bring it to the authorities. Investigators quickly made their way to the carbon market, seeking any installed CCTVs that might shed more light on the situation. Quickly, they secured the footage showing a man unmistakably wearing an orange t-shirt, seemingly in possession of the victim's mobile phone. Officers quickly shared the man's image on social media as a person of interest in Rhea's death. Then, on July 29th, at around 1 in the afternoon, the Guadalupe police station received a tip-off concerning a man brandishing a firearm in their vicinity. Acting on this information, officers from the police department quickly and forcefully arrested Simeon Kamangyan Gabatero, a 22-year-old from Cebu City. Upon his apprehension, they discovered an unlicensed firearm loaded with four bullets in his possession. Further investigations revealed that Gabatero was the same individual captured on the CCTV footage. He was now recognized as the primary person of interest in the tragic demise of Rhea. During the police interrogation, officers presented Gabatero with the CCTV footage where he was seen holding Rhea's mobile phone. While he acknowledged being the person in the video, he claimed that he had obtained the device from a neighbor, Ramil Roberto Gabison often referred to as Insick or Iceman. According to Gabatero, this exchange happened on July 16th, 2023. He said that Gabison had asked him to sell the mobile phone for him. Gabatero mentioned that after successfully selling the device, he handed the money to Gabison after taking a small cut for himself as they agreed. On July 30th, at 7.45 a.m., Gabison was apprehended in a buy or bust operation directed towards one of his associates. Gabison admitted that he knew the police were actively searching for him. However, he chose not to surrender due to his fear of being wrongly accused and implicated in the crime. When officers asked Gabatero to identify the man who had instructed him to sell the mobile phone, 
he positively identified the man as Ramil Roberto Gabison. Gabison vehemently denied the allegations leveled against him. He claimed that he never met Gabitero and he was unfamiliar with the victim. Gabison acknowledged pawning a mobile phone, but stated that it was his own, pawned out of a need for cash to cover the cost of a rented bed space he shared with his living partner. To back up his claim, he said that the pawn receipt was in his wife's possession. On August 4th, 2023, the Philippine National Police took DNA samples from both Gabatero and Gabison. These samples would be tested with the DNA found under Reyes' fingernails. While authorities awaited the DNA test results, an unexpected lead surfaced. A taxi driver approached a local radio station to give an interview. They shared a potentially significant account. According to him, on July 17th, he remembered picking up two passengers. One was a woman with tattoos who was carrying a large box and with her was a man. They hailed his taxi and directed him to some apartments in Barangay Labangon. Interestingly, the driver's description of the woman bore a striking resemblance to Rhea's best friend and who was the one who lived with her, Jewel Smith. Okay, so this seems a little crazy to me. How is it a taxi driver can go on a public radio station and make such accusations? Even if they are to be true, surely you would go to the police. I can't get my head around why you would go to a radio station. On August 7th, an incensed Jewel Smith arrived at the Cebu City Police Station, intent on clearing her tarnished name. This was directly as a result of the taxi driver's claims, implicating her in the death of her close friend. Smith firmly reiterated her prior statement that the last time they saw Rhea was on July 16th. Since the driver's public interview, Smith said both herself and her family had been victims of violent threats, as well as unwarranted accusations on social media. Her image had been shared everywhere online, linking her to the crime. Smith emphasized that on July 17th, she was simply at home, taking a rest. It was a Sunday and a day off from commitments. She was recuperating from fatigue, having returned home late the previous night after work. Smith was now preparing to file a lawsuit against the taxi driver for spreading false allegations against her. She even asked the driver to produce any dashcam footage as evidence to back up the claims. It would appear that Jewel was nothing more than a good friend to Rhea. Could you imagine the anger you would feel? Not only to lose your best friend, but also to be accused of her murder and everybody seemingly believe it. The fear she must have felt of the repercussions of a crime that she didn't commit. However, on August 10th, 2023, a significant development in the case emerged. DNA results revealed a match between samples obtained from the victim and those of 22-year-old Simeon Gabatero. Upon receiving this conclusive evidence, Gabatero broke down, confessing to the heinous crime he had committed. What I am about to say, I want to make clear, is Gabatero's version of events, and in no way am I stating that these are facts. In his extrajudicial confession at the Cebu City Prosecutor's Office, Gabatero revealed how he got to know Rhea through Facebook, which eventually blossomed into a relationship beginning on December 5th, 2022. 
even though their interactions were limited to online conversations, he found himself deeply infatuated with her. As a construction worker, Gabatero claimed to earn decent money, but most of it he claimed he sent to Rhea to help her with her studies. However, he was taken aback when he discovered that Rhea did not enroll in school, as he had thought. Instead, he learned that she had moved to Cebu on July 14th and was residing in a boarding house. The horrifying details of Rhea's final moments were recounted by Gabatero, but I must stress, this is his version of events. Before the tragedy on July 16th, he had arranged to meet Rhea outside an elementary school, which was not far from his home. Upon meeting, he immediately noticed Rhea's inebriated state. Her drunkenness, however, didn't deter him from questioning her about her suspected other lover. Rhea defensively insisted that the man in question was merely a friend. The conversation continued to Gabatero's home, where the mood swiftly changed from confusion to confrontation. The crime transpired within the confines of his room. Shielded from any witnesses, Gabatero emphasized that the murder was a solitary act, without any additional participants or onlookers. He said, the room was closed, no one was inside, my family knew I had a visitor, but I ensured they remained outside. They were oblivious to anything happening. Inside his room, their conversation continued, but took a darker turn when Gabatero stumbled upon her chats with various men on different Facebook accounts on her phone. Enraged, he lost control. He then choked her by locking her neck within his arms until she stopped breathing. In the aftermath of the violent act, panic took hold of Gabatero. Instead of seeking help or coming clean about his actions, he decided to hide the evidence. He bound Rhea's lifeless body, wrapping her in a blanket and then concealing her within the cardboard box. To maintain the facade of normalcy, he told his family that Rhea had simply left after their meeting. He concluded his account by admitting that he alone discarded of Rhea's body, laying to rest the speculation around the crime's details. Although Gabatero admitted to strangling Rhea, this was not the whole truth. The autopsy report revealed that the victim's body bore signs of severe torture. Her hands and feet were bound with aluminium cables. Her face appears to have been burned by a strong chemical, leaving little flesh on the skull. Numerous bruises marked on various parts of her body. Her frame was contorted, covered in a white blanket, and then placed inside a box sealed with packaging tape. Disturbingly, she also bore a stab wound on her left chest. Additionally, remnants of a tire were tightly wrapped around her body and neck. He claimed in a panic state, he put the remains in a box and dumped them by the side of the road. This was a brutal and cruel attack. There were traces of blood that were found under Rhea's fingernails that matched Gabatero's blood samples. She managed to scratch Gabatero while he choked her to death and this is what ended bringing her some justice. It's also been reported that Gabatero's younger brother helped dispose of the body. Gabatero was spotted riding a bike on CCTV with someone on the back holding the box. But to be fair to the younger brother, it's also reported that he had no idea what was inside the box and thinking that it's a human body probably isn't the first thing to come to mind. Gabatero's confession, coupled with the motorcycle CCTV evidence, led the Cebu City Police to conclude their investigation into Rhea's tragic death. 
the police have formally charged Gabatero with murder, classifying the heinous act as a crime of passion. The driving factors behind the crime, as outlined by the authorities, were overwhelming jealousy and uncontrollable anger. Meanwhile, Gabison is held at the Cebu City's police station's custodial facility, facing separate charges relating to illegal substances possession and distribution. As both cases progress, the local community and families involved await justice for the crimes committed. Reyes' family, however, cannot accept the result of the investigation. They instead question Gabatero's confession and they demand a separate investigation. The girl's sister, Grace, posted her family statement on her Facebook page on Thursday night, August 10th. It said, we cannot accept that instead of achieving justice for the death of Rhea, it was her reputation that got tarnished due to the questionable so-called extrajudicial confession of Gabatero. Before disclosing his accusations, they should have thoroughly clarified all aspects of his story. Both of Rhea's sisters also went face to face with her killer. Gabatero. One of them, Poblesion, said to him, You devil, you have a child and yet you did this. How would you feel if your child or sibling experienced this? You easily took my sister's life. How terrible was the sin of my younger sister and why did you do this? You will pay for this and I pray that you rot in jail. After being reprimanded by Rhea's sisters within the detention facility, Gabatero bowed down and made an effort to apologize, but he kept his distance from the bars. Because of Rhea's facial damage, her siblings and their father, Romeo, did not think Gabatero was the only person who committed the crime. They also do not believe that Gabatero sent Rhea money every week. Poblesion said, Are you crazy? How dare you claim that you frequently sent money? Since last December, we have kept an eye on our younger sister to make sure she was studying. If you lie, do it correctly. We won't believe you. You can't buy back what you did to our sister with money. Keep in mind that we would have accepted her death if you had simply killed her without disfiguring her face. Amidst the anger and frustration, Poblesion fainted after she had difficulty breathing. In the intricate web of events surrounding Rhea's tragic demise, questions remain and emotions run high and justice is fiercely fought for. My thoughts are with the family at this time and I hope that they get the justice they deserve. That's the end of this episode. Until next time, stay sane.